Oh, this is gonna suck. Hey, what's up everybody? So you might be wondering what am I doing out here crossing creeks and all the snow? Well, let me give you a little backstory. So I've been in this area a couple of times before, pretty briefly, and not in this exact area. Um, but each time I came in here, I was really struck by one, just how beautiful this place is. It's, it's gorgeous. Two, there's a creek that runs through the length of this canyon, which is pretty unique out in the desert to have a creek that flows year round. And then three, I've come across a couple of rock art panels that have left me intrigued about, hey, what else might be out here? Anytime you've got fresh, clear running water in the desert, you can generally guarantee people have been using it for as long as people have been here. Let me give you what I know about the area. So like a lot of places in the Southwest, this place has probably been inhabited by peoples for over 10,000 years. In the early days of that time period, the people were probably largely hunting uh, larger game, maybe some game left over from the Ice Age. As that larger game began to die out, the lifestyle probably wouldn't have changed that dramatically. The tribes at that time were still very much hunter-gatherer types. Then fast forward in a little bit, the group of people that probably spent maybe the most amount of time in this area become known as the Fremont culture. And it's believed that they started to adopt some more farming and agriculture into their lifestyle. So they were kind of like semi-nomadic. I mean, they certainly still hunted and gathered, but they began to incorporate a little bit more of a sedentary or permanent lifestyle. And then in more modern times, we would have had what we would consider modern tribes like the Hopi, the Ute, the Paiute, the Navajo. And those were the tribes that were here when the first Europeans and Americans, white Americans, started to come into this area. Well, that got interesting. So I literally just walked around that juniper tree and voila, we got this right here. So I was kind of, before I turned the camera on, I was kind of taking a look at it, trying to figure out, uh, you know, maybe what time period it could have come from. And I, <laughs> ultimately, I don't know. You know, the tricky part is, right, you've got thousands of years of human history here. And some of the early settlers in this place kind of adopted some of the native construction techniques because they made sense for this area and so you know stacking rocks filling in the gaps with some basically mud is something the natives did but some of the early settlers did that as well so i don't really know how old this thing is i'll have to walk around a little more maybe check up under those cliffs see if i can find any other clues to maybe what time period this is from well, I walked a little bit further. Interesting. Let's go take a closer look. Pretty big chimney here, that's neat. Looks like maybe another smaller chimney over here in this, what would have been a separate room here. So here's looking into that little room. Wonder what this room was used for. So here's what uh, I would assume would have been the front door, kind of the main room here. This huge beam has fallen through the door.
So here's the third and final room. So this was like a three room cabin, which was pretty big for back in the day. So this is clearly from either the late 1800s, early 1900s. It's hard to say without knowing the exact history of this spot. This is pretty close to that first structure I saw. And so given that, I'm sure they were probably connected and that was probably just some outline building like a shed, you know, storage shed or something like that. That was a fun little surprise, wasn't it? Let's keep looking. Looks like some beavers done some work here at some point in the past. Wow, looking around closer, there's a lot of beaver activity here. A lot of downed trees. That's really what brought white Euro Americans into this area first was uh, furs and more specifically beaver furs. All right, this is pretty cool. So I've been walking probably, I don't know, maybe I'm half mile away from that cabin and I've been paying really close attention to uh, just all the rock faces, trying to look for rock art and such. And this is the first thing I found, AC Montano. There's that accent over the N. So definitely like kind of Spanish in heritage. Now who AC Montano is, I don't know. I might have to Google that, see if anything comes up. A lot of water down there. Some big cottonwoods. Huh. I think I might see something up over on that cliff band, so let's go see if I can find a way across the creek. The creek is pretty frozen here. Let's give it a shot. really love to make it without having to get wet again. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, so I was over there, crossed over. And what I saw, where'd they go? I think they're, yeah, check those out. Wow. This is a cool little panel here. Kind of a big handed, big, big footed guy. Some sort of a headdress on. Got a, it's kind of like a creepy crawly bug in the middle. Maybe a sheep. Let's see if there's any more along this cliff. So about 20 feet down, we've got some more here. This thing in particular is kind of odd. I almost passed it up, but below that, Look at this name. It's kind of hard to make out, maybe A.M. Starks? Uh, Stanley, no, I don't know. But the date, maybe that's August, but what I can see pretty clearly, 1886. There's a lot more ground I want to cover, so let's keep pushing. So some of you have been asking, you know, hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Well, I won't give my life story, but <laughs> uh, my real job, I'm a hiking and backpacking guide. I've been lucky enough to get to work in just some iconic places like Yellowstone, the Grand Tetons, Grand Canyon, 
Zion, a couple other national parks and some national forest lands. And I kind of grew up on, you know, Western novels and uh, spaghetti Westerns. The, the inspiration for the name of the channel actually came from a Clint Eastwood film, High Plains Drifter. And I was like, well, I'm not really on the high plains, but I'm in the desert a lot. So I'll be the desert drifter. I've always had a love of history. You know, I was like the, the weird elementary school kid when all my friends were reading Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. You know, I had some book about like the Battle of Gettysburg campaign or, uh, <laughs> you know, westward expansion, something like that. So yeah, I've always just loved the story of people and our interaction with other people and with the environment. So up above this creek here, we have got a ton of rock art along this entire wall. So let's go take a closer look at it. So right above where I climbed up, there's this thing, quite interesting. I've seen a lot of kind of whirls or swirls. This one's unique and it's got what looks like a snake head sort of coming out of that. got a flute player down here so to the left of the snake swirl looks like we got a couple people and this big figure maybe a shaman or something interestingly he's got what looks like about six fingers on each hand maybe a snake to the left of him we got a bighorn sheep up here. And then possibly headdresses or maybe a bear paw. They kind of look like crowns, don't they? And then we got a flute player clearly there. Maybe like a cocopelli type figure. Lots of flute players. So we got that guy. There's another one. A little harder to see because of dirt that's washed down on it. Something kind of interesting is this guy. You know, he's got like a big staff. Maybe a corn plant there in the middle. And let's work our way left. I'm not really sure what they are that one over here on the right almost looks like got tentacles coming out of its body pretty strange creature this one up here maybe some antlers on its head these certainly have some age on them centuries if not over a thousand years Okay, I just found some more right up, right up on this desert varnish wall. That's what all this black sort of dark wall is. We call it desert varnish out here. Let's go see what's up there. Got some more sheep along with some kind of a humanoid figure over there on the right. This guy's a bit intimidating looking. He reminds me a lot of that kind of similar looking creature we saw on that other panel. Looks like there's another one here to the left. This design here in the middle is pretty interesting. I don't, don't really know what that would be. Another animal to the left of it. Notice these up here. What I kind of interpret to be like bird's feet, maybe turkey feet. Turkeys have been found at archaeological sites like uh, Chaco Canyon, I think Mesa Verde. So at least some of the tribes in the southwest domesticated turkeys and, and raised them. You know, oftentimes when I look at rock art, I wonder like, why here? Why this place? Sometimes it's fairly obvious. You know, this one's a little less so. It's 
maybe uh, you know 30 feet to the bottom there and then even further down to the creek it just seems uh, I don't know it just seems a little obscure there are other protected areas where art could have been done but for some reason up in this little corner it was chosen and you might be thinking oh well maybe that's like a travel route I don't think people are coming up and down this it's pretty steep I don't know how well the camera shows it so coming down looking at it from a different angle I realized I'd walked right up past all of this when I was coming up some sort of uh, I don't know if it's a snake or just kind of a squiggly line representing something and then some more more animals maybe another snake an odd creature here to the right there's so much to see in this canyon I can tell I'm really just scratching the surface of it it'd be really nice to come back in here in the spring when these cottonwood trees are starting to leaf out it's a little bit warmer I'm not slipping and sliding around on snow I guess I'll have to add this to the long list of places to come back to I know some of you all who watch the channel you get out and do some of your own hiking and exploring and you probably know that feeling where you're just like oh there's so much to see and so little time but we'll be back here sometime thanks for tuning in guys hope you enjoyed it uh, if you liked the video you know give it a like hit subscribe to keep exploring the southwest with me I've got some things coming up i'm pretty excited about to show y'all so yeah stay tuned i'll see you next time